Robin, I would say it's a hard to like. I would claim her 100% as my mom, and I would tell people that she's one of my moms. But I think like after the divorce, it was harder to have a relationship with her just because I think like there was a wall built, and mm -hmm. I don't know who put it there, and but it definitely unfortunately was. Wait, oh, can I say this? Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was, and like that sucks because her kids are phenomenal. everyone it's katie from without a crystal ball welcome back to my channel it is monday january 23rd 2023 and i hope you're having a wonderful day this is uh the never ending sister wives girls speak out or children of christine brown speak out uh more and more of them are starting to find their voice and mckelty and tony actually hosted a interview with their sister isabel on their patreon and i had some one of my followers, again, sent some clips to me, which I thought were, it's very different to watch Isabel talk about the family because she has a very gentle delivery in how she speaks about anyone. And it's really, really, really clear that Isabel is not going to be the one that is going to go out of their way to say super negative things about the people in her family. Though she's not shy to share how she feels, it was very evident based on the clips I was sent that she was very gentle in what she said about people. It was clear she didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And it can be really hard when you have uh, disagreements in families and relationships fracture and marriages fall apart and families fall apart. So as Christine's kids are starting to get more and more open with their experiences, there has been some details about Robin, Cody, Mary, all the people. But something that Isabel spoke about is something that I think is pretty relevant and speaks to some of the financial issues that we've seen with this family. It also speaks to some of the hustling you see of the ladies online selling various products, whether it's their MLMs, their subscriptions, or the content they make, or if it's Mary selling a ridiculously priced retreat. There is a lot that these women have to go through in order to leave and becoming financially secure is one of them. One of the things that Isabel spoke about was that uh, some of the relationships that she has with some of the other moms are not as close. In the beginning of this video, you saw that she was talking about how there's a sort of like a wall between her and Robin and that her relationship with Robin really isn't great since the divorce. Again, sort of going to Gwendolyn's point that the double standard of it all, you know, Robin was worried about Christine having a relationship with her kids, but then Robin doesn't put in an effort with Cody's children, even though she's literally legally their stepmother. Legally, she's a stepmom. But it was what she had to say about her mom and how hard her mom wanted has to work and why she doesn't like polygamy that I thought was the most interesting that I would share with you for this video. So before we dive into this topic of polygamy is un inherently unfair to women, as revealed by Isabel, can you do me a big favor and give this video a thumbs up? Also subscribe to my channel if you've not yet subscribed and turn the notifications on so you know when I go live and or when new content loads. And I totally apologize for my voice. I don't know what's going on, but suddenly I um, am having a hard time, like my throat kind of hurts. So if anyone's getting some of that winter yuck, raise your hands. I didn't even know I had it until I started filming. Okay, so after she described how things have gotten sort of off track with Robin, she discussed how her mom had to work extra hard in order to become financially stable and why this was a necessity. Check it out. There's no book on it. It's, taboo. it's kind of taboo too. Yeah, there's no book on divorce yeah. and polygamy. There's nothing that you could read about that would like give you helpful hints or like nothing on it. And like what there is, it's like the women who like have divorced are like discarded and they're like and not even a part of the group and like they're like ostracized it's like they're not good people like we talk badly about the women who leave polygamy remember how when i interviewed kristen decker she said that when a woman leaves polygamy it, they are slandered the people are disparaging them they're ostracized they're shunned they're called bad people they're labeled not safe they are 
you know, basically like everyone drives the bus over them. Their fault is all fault that remember that that's literally Isabel saying we talk badly about people that leave, live polygamy. That's Isabel admitting in her own words that the family speaks negatively when someone leaves polygamy. And because of that, women that leave are ostracized. And so when they are leaving, there's no rules about how to handle this within a family. So my guesstimate here is that she has had her own experience of seeing women leave now um, from the inside of her family, seeing for point blank people talked about negatively. And it's inherently unequal for a woman that leaves uh, when she does leave because they slander her, which you've seen a lot of them slander Mary. I think their issues with Mary are valid, but I think a lot of the fault should go on to Cody, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. But that's her basically saying what I've told you before that, and what Kristen has told you before is that when someone leaves, they're not treated well and they're shunned. So she's admitting it. Like they're not, we don't, they don't have good connotations. And so it was just something so uncomfortable and something that none of us were really used to. And so I don't think any of us, like the moms, the kids, nobody knew how to go about it. And so I think maybe we didn't go about it in the best way. However, I wish that there was still a relationship with everybody. Unfortunately, in divorce, in a lot of divorcing relationships and just situations, that just doesn't happen. And I think in our situation, it unfortunately didn't. I would love to have a relationship with everybody though. This part of her conversation and leading up to it, they were talking about her relationships with Mary and Robin. And I think this has to do with like the family managing Christine leaving. So how is that going to impact Christine and how is that going to impact Christine's kids? And what she's saying is that when someone leaves, they are ostracized, shunned, spoken badly about, uh, people speak negatively about, walls are put up, they're labeled as bad people. And so her mom is being labeled as a bad person for leaving and I think a wall has been put up by Robin and her dad with some of the kids because they've left the fold and gone with Christine. They're not staying in the group. And this is sort of what we've seen from the outside or from the watching the show of how he speaks about her and when Robin wanted to go deep with them about, you know, what it meant for the family. They were really trying to just sort of like reinforce, in my opinion, that this was Christine's fault and it was she's the bad one, we're the good one, and to sort of set that stage. And it creates a divide. Um, I don't know that that's what Christine wanted, but I think that's where Christine had to have safeguards up with her relationships because they're going to get shunned. So I hope that makes sense. And then my least favorite thing, I think, is unfortunately what is bound to happen just um, with having so many kids and not so many so much time to give each individual kid. It gets hard to show maybe some certain kids the love that it takes to help a child grow. And so I think that we were perhaps um, not given that a little bit, which is unfortunate. So when it comes to the least favorite thing she said about polygamy was related to how she felt about being raised with so many kids. And unfortunately, because of that, not getting the attention or the love she felt she needed as a child and how children just don't get the attention that they need. She said over and over and over again, like she loves her siblings and her siblings are her best friends. But unfortunately from the parental side, she just didn't get the attention she needed. And I'm, she didn't say it was like her mom, but I would assume because her dad isn't home as much, she wouldn't have seen him as much as she might've wanted. Because if you're in a monogamous relationship, dad's always home. But if the kid in polygamy, they might see other dad only once or twice a week. And it's kind of like being raised within a divorced situation in the respect that you don't see your dad as much or the other parent as much. So she doesn't like that. Then she went on to talk about, you know, why she would never be a polygamist. And she had talked about how she just feels it's very inherently like imbalanced and how women don't have the same rights as men and that she doesn't think it's fair that a woman would be in love with a man and that for the woman, that man is everything that she needs. But for the man, she's not everything that he needs. So he's constantly seeking out more women, which could inherently cause jealousy. But it was her take on what happens when a woman leaves and how messed up it is for a woman that is not a 
legal wife and what it means to leave in that respect. So if you recall, Janelle had told Christine something about, Christine had said in a podcast that Janelle had told her that like she needed to get all of her financials in a row in order to get prepared to leave the relationship. And that's because legally speaking, Christine has no leg to stand on because Cody is not her husband. So she cannot sue him for spousal support. She cannot ask for alimony because she is not his legal wife. She can certainly get child support for truly, but she's not going to walk away with support. And this is something that she talks about, Isabel, about how hard it is on the women that are not the legal wives and the inherent unfairness of it. Do you feel like, like polygamy is unfair, unfair to the women, women in, in this situation? situation? Yes. Like, like how, how much work mom had to do to make sure that she would be financially stable after dad is ridiculous. Like, like in normal situations of monogamy, that never would have been the case because the, the husband would have had to support the woman afterwards. But no. No, 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 no. They weren't legally married. No. So. so, like, the women who aren't legally married to, like, the husband are effed. <laughs> they literally are. And it's so sad. It's so sad. And they shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. And also, I think that women just don't really, they're, it's, a, it's just, like, a fear-based community. It's, like, they're so, so, so afraid. And I think women are more afraid than they should be. And that's just so sad. In a state like Arizona... If you are legally married to your partner, it's a joint property state. In the state of Minnesota, where I live, if you're legally married to someone, it's a joint property state. That means that what you bring into this marriage and what I bring into this marriage from like my husband and I, we become our, our property and our assets are jointly owed, owned. And so unless we have a division of assets or we have a prenuptial agreement or a postnuptial agreement, whatever it is that states how the assets will be divided. From a court's perspective, generally it would be just 50-50. So you own 50% of the assets, he owns 50% of the assets. And what she's saying is that when Christine left, had she been legally married to Cody, she would have been entitled to a split with him of the assets instead of simply walking away and he keeps what he had from the relationship and he keeps the money that they made from the relationship and she doesn't get that because she has no legal claim to it. He has a wife named Robin who has legal claims to half of everything he owns. And so when he makes decisions with the family and Robin's name is on it, ultimately she's the only one legally protected in the event that she decides to leave. So Robin, by not only convincing Cody that she needed to become the legal wife, put herself in a better legal position in the event she is going to divorce him. And I say, if she's going to, I do believe that at some point Robin will divorce Cody. I don't see their relationship lasting. I, Unless, for instance, they decide to take a sister wife, I just don't see it working out long term because I think she's going to grow tired of his antics. As much as we don't like Robin, I think she's as much of a victim as the rest of the women and that the women really have to, they they have to get power any way that they can in these groups. So that means sometimes being cruel to other women. That means trying to jockey for position. That means competing for attention. That means trying to become the, the legal wife so you have an advantage over the others. It's all a survival of the fittest, really. So a lot of people blame the women for all of the bad things that happen, and yes, they're a huge part of it, the fault ultimately comes down to the patriarch, the patriarchal environment, and the control of the cult. And so, yes, uh, they make mistakes, but at the same time, the, women's, the women are all victims of the system along with the kids. And the women can abuse the children, that doesn't change that, but the long, the, the, the hierarchy puts them in an inferior position so the only people they take things out on are on the kids. And then the kids are left with taking it out on each other and uh, getting kicked out, disobeying, or being kicked out of the family, or towing the line, staying in line, and being obedient and being a good kid. I really like Isabel because she's really careful in what she says, and she's very considerate about how she might impact other people, but I also like that she's very thoughtful about the reasons why she does things. I think there's a difference between her and some of her other siblings as when she's speaking, I can tell that she is literally thinking about, is this going to hurt someone? Am I going to make someone feel bad? 
can I say this? She said that a lot during this interview. Is it okay for me to say this? Should I say this? I don't know if I should say this. Whereas, you know, some of her other siblings will just say it regardless. They don't care if it hurts someone. Now, I want to just say this, is that some fans are angry at the kids because they feel like now they're just airing out their dirty laundry. It's weird that people have this feeling about the sister wives with the girls and the kids speaking out. But when like the Duggar kids speak out, nobody gets upset. Or I mean, maybe some of them do, but the bulk of people are supportive of say Jill or Ginger speaking their truth about what happened to them or how they grew up. But then there's this loud, smaller population that get angry and see, seem to think that the kids don't have a right to say anything because they have to honor their parents and that they're somehow trying to get their 15 minutes of fame. They're already famous. They didn't ask to be famous. Their parents put them on TV shows when they were kids and they didn't consent to that. They couldn't consent to that because they were not adults. So is it really fair to say that they're not allowed to speak about what their experience is and that they're just riding their 15 minutes? Or is that the fact that they're speaking disrupts the reality that fans had of this family and it doesn't match in that that equilibrium that they had is out of balance now. And they don't like the reality that they're seeing of, wait, the kids are saying it was this, and I thought it was this. And it's painful me to full, painful for me to realize as a viewer that it was painful for them. And I didn't know that. And I feel bamboozled. <laughs> and I feel lied to. So instead, I'm just going to say that they're being ungrateful kids and they shouldn't be talking about their parents so that I can stay in my area here where I'm happy believing that this was a happy family. Just because a family looks happy on the outside doesn't mean that they're not happy on the on the inside. And not just because people share negative things that happen in a family, that doesn't take away that positive things come out of it. They all have positive things to say about their sibling relationships. They all have positive things to say about each of them have a good relationship with one of the mothers. Uh, you know, we shouldn't, I think if I were going to be critical of them, or if I were going to talk to someone that is critical of the kids speaking out, I would just say to them, like, if it's uncomfortable for you to hear it, imagine what it was, must have been for them to live it. And then maybe remove your discomfort and just be open to them speaking because they've never spoken before. So I will, I applaud them for speaking on their side of the story. And I'm encouraged to hear that they have something to say. And I am proud that there's gr girls in this family that are not going to buy into the patriarchy and that have seemingly become feminists of a way, realizing that they're worth more than being a man's servant and becoming a uterus for God and for a man, for his harem, for his cult. That's awesome in my book because they know that they're worth more and they have value outside of that. And that doesn't negate that women that want to be mothers are bad people. It's just that in this group, there's no other option. So tell me what your thoughts are about this in the comments below. Bye guys.